Okay, um, this is a really short one. Uh, I want to talk just basically about uh, elasticity material constants. Okay, well, we're talking about material constants. Uh, we've already seen a couple, right? We've talked about Young's modulus, E. We've talked about Poisson's ratio, nu. We've also talked about the shear modulus or the modulus of rigidity, G. Those all govern the elastic response. Now, as it turns out, if you have an isotropic material. In other words, that means there's no preferred direction for the material. So most of the times, uh, you'll see engineering materials are assumed to be isotropic. So a, a piece of metal, basically, if uh, here's a pencil, well, wood not so wood <laughs> We uh, pull on the toothbrush, uh, you get the same response, you know, regardless of which direction you kind of apply. Stiffness in all directions is the same. If I pull in this direction, I get the same Young's modulus as if I pull in this direction. Okay? There's no preferred direction. Pull in this direction, right? You get the same Young's modulus, all right? That's an isotropic material. A lot of times that's the case. Uh, you will see a lot of, there's a good number of engineering materials that are isotropic. I talked about wood. Wood has a different stiffness in the grain than across the grain. There's a lot of classes of composite materials. I have someone in my office that has seen these where uh, they're pretty common now. You take uh, like a weave of very strong fibers and you embed them in a matrix of material and you can get different responses in actually all three directions. So you can get different Young's modulus. But if you have an, you know, an isotropic material, which is what we're going to be dealing with for this entire class, you can show from thermodynamics and from symmetry that there are only two independent elastic constants. Oh, the constants of elastic and elastic constants. I always have a tough time speaking and writing. Okay. Uh, so here I have three. In fact, there's only two that are independent. So there's a relationship between those three in particular I give it. And here it is. The shear modulus is related to Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio as follows. So if you're given Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, you can show the shear modulus, or you get the shear modulus and Young's modulus, you can show the Poisson's ratio, or Poisson's ratio and shear modulus, you can turn to Young's modulus. And in fact, there's a whole slew of material constants for elasticity. There's lots of different names for them. Uh, for example, you can have bulk modules. There are these uh, constants called the Lame constants. And uh, again, if you know two of them, you can determine all of them. Right? Once you define two material constants for elasticity, for isotropic elasticity, now they're all done. Okay? 
just there. So what we have here is we have actually five different material constants. We have Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, it's a little tough to see. Shear modulus, which happens to be equal to mu of the Lame constant, lambda, which is a Lame constant, both modulus. And there's other ones called soft constants. But you can see if you have any two of those, Let's say we have E and nu, determine G, determine lambda, determine the bulk modulus, K, so that we cap. Right? So there's 